your aims. Welcome to IT Security Labs, guys. This is another impromptu live stream on our YouTube and Facebook page. And today we just want to do an ethical hacking session, all right? I want to show you guys hands-on live learning in our lab here. And we're going to import a machine called misdirection. Let me lower this down. So our machine today is called misdirection. This is a vulnerable machine that we downloaded from Vulnhub. And we're going to exploit this machine. So this is ethical hacking, live learning. And I encourage everyone who is part of this group, who is interested in ethical hacking, to spend some time hacking machines from Vulnhub. This machine is actually listed here as part of the NetSec trophy machines. So this, these are the machines that are encouraged for people who are going for the OSCP exam. These are considered to be similar to the OSCP exams. And this machine here is called Misdirection. It's number 47 here. So that's what we're going for. So if you're interested in ethical hacking, take some notes as I go out through this process. We're going to exploit this machine until we become root. I'll show you my thought process on what I'm doing and how we're doing it. And hopefully it can help you learn ethical hacking in your own time. So how, what did we do here? I first came in here and I downloaded the machine. It's free from Vulnhub, so I downloaded it from here. Then I imported it into our lab. This is a lab that we're setting up on our YouTube channel. So on the IT Security Labs YouTube channel, we have this lab right here. So make sure to set it up on your own, however you set it up. But as you can see, we have a bunch of machines in here. And what one of those machines is misdirection. I just imported the OVM. All right. So now that we have our OVM in here, it's vulnerable. We just need to just go ahead and exploit it. That's all we're doing here today. So if you just joined us, I'm just explaining how the lab is set up. We downloaded a virtual machine here. We're going to crack this machine. And then we imported it into our lab, which we set up on our YouTube channel, IT Security Labs YouTube channel. This lab, we set it up there. And this machine got DHCP IP address from our domain controller which is a Windows Server 2016. So this is a fully blown lab environment that mimics a small business. So most small businesses have something like this. And then, uh, of course, we're monitoring this lab with Zabbix. We're monitoring it with Security Onion. So I'll generate a bunch of events here that you can see as we do the attack. Um, then we are also monitoring our Active Directory. If there's any logged out accounts, any accounts that are expired and stuff like that, we're also doing some monitoring here. We have a real firewall on this lab, like a real next-gen firewall, which we also set up on our YouTube channel. So this lab is really great for learning. But today's focus is on just the CTF part. We want to learn ethical hacking here. So we're going to go after this machine. And then after that, if we have some time, we can look at the logs in Security Onion. But for now, let's go ahead and um, exploit this machine. Like I said earlier, this is, this machine is in here in our lab and this IP address is 1.2.168.30.15. We can also confirm this IP address by just checking our domain controller to make sure that it's the right machine. But VMware should be pretty much accurate there. So we can check in our domain controller here. Let me show you what it looks like. So here it is, misdirection, got 192.168.30.15. So we're good to go. So now let's fire up our Kali Linux here. This is running in, um, what is it, VMware Fusion. But it's also connected to the same network. So we're in my Kali Linux machine. And um, this is Kali Linux 2019.1. It looks like Windows. This is like the Windows undercover mode. So let's go ahead and um, ping our machine. 182.68.38.15. Do we have responses? We just want to make sure that our target is up and running. So now that our target is running, we can go ahead and start the exploitation process. 
So if you haven't done any um, ethical hacking in, in courts, this is the first part where we do some um, reconnaissance. So we want to find out more information about our target. Uh, we can do some enumeration here, some port scans, but uh, just to make it easy for ourselves here, let's go for nmap minus SV. I'll explain what these ones are, minus SC. In 192.168.38.15. So we're just going to run my nmap. I'm just going to say, hey, nmap, make sure that you find me service versions. So if you find any services, find service versions. I'm also going to just use the default scripts. And this is going to go for TCP ports, top 1000 ports. Nothing crazy here. I'm not saving this to anything. I just want to display the results. So that's there it goes. If you're wondering what I'm doing, I was studying for the CEH exam, reading this book here, and I find this material to be a little boring, to be honest with you. I read this many pages. I don't know if you can see this. And I just got bored. So I was like, you know what, let's do the exciting stuff. Let's hack a machine, because that's more exciting than reading that book. That's why I'm doing this this late at night, because I just need that um, ability to just do things. All right. So we went and did an nmap scan, we found port 22 with this version. We're just going to leave that one alone for now. We have port 80, which is interesting. Uh, 33, my SQL is running and port 8080. So what I like to do here is let's go and find out what's on port 80 and port 8080 because that's the easiest one to see. So it's one and two, six, eight, 38.15. We're gathering information about our target here. We're not doing anything interesting other than just finding out what does the target have for us. 8080. Right, so on port 80, free, secure, trusted, very <laughs> online voting. Okay. Trust me, I didn't choose this based on what is happening in the in the United States right now. This just happens to be. Alright. So we have an engine here. What I like to do is I like to find out more information about this target. I poke around, click on all these links, find out if there's anything interesting. You can view the page source to see if there's any uh, comments, JavaScript, anything of interest that is down here in the comments. Usually if there's any JavaScript or any, if it's calling any other external resources, you'll be able to see there sometimes. So let's go to e-voting. What's there? Nothing. Elections. Ooh, that is interesting. We have a login page. Remember me for, for 30 days. Sign up. So I create fake stuff here. Let's see if we can just sign up. Unable to send mail. Okay. So look at the elections. Okay. Features. E voting features. Download manual. Can we get something? Okay. This might be useful. So you want to be saving this information as you go. But source code. This is like an open book for us. <laughs> okay. So if we really wanted to know more about whatever that application is, we can go to the source code here. Interesting. All right, let's look at Apache on port 8080. This looks like the default Apache installation. It's nothing there. Interesting. All right, so if you just joined us, we're just doing a quick late night ethical hacking demonstration. I was studying for the CEH and I just got bored. So I just wanted to crack a machine quick before going to bed. And it's just exciting to share with you guys as well because you get to see my thought process. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do, let's run Go Buster. I have my cheat sheet here under enumeration. Here's my Go Buster. Ah, I don't want to deal with this. Let's run Derb. HTTP. <laughs> 
got 38. Got 15. Derb is going to be quicker than Gobaster, but let's see what we see with Derb on this one. This is going for port 80. And by the way, our lab should also be capturing this in Security Onion as I make this noise. Security Onion should be detecting these attacks right now. As you can see, it observed my Nmap engine doing all the, the scanning that I was doing. So Derb is also going to be caught here. This is all the noise that is being detected by Security Onion. But for now, let's leave that one alone. Let's see what we can find with Derb. All right, there we go. That was quick. Um, I got a warning here. Let's see if I found anything of interest here. This is a very busy machine, so... Sysadmin. Okay. There's, there's a lot of uh, output here. So we, we just need to go through all this and make sure that we see what, what, what's available on our target. All right. So now that we have seen all this stuff, we need to narrow it down a little bit. There's just too much noise for us to see. Slash admin. Let me go and check that. Okay, that's interesting. All right, let's 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 go for this one. Can I see something here? Now I'm going for port 8080. This is part of the enumeration process. We're just enumerating to make sure that uh, my cheat sheet is running in OneNote. Microsoft OneNote. All right, so you see now we're getting somewhere. We have Shell, we have WordPress, we have Manual, we have Scripts. These are also interesting. And we have Debug. Let's check all those. Okay. Sure can be that easy, right? I guess debug is going to give us a shell here. So with this shell in debug mode, let's see. Uh, can we really ID where WW data? Okay, let's quickly do something. That's the easiest thing to do here. Let's see if we can get a reverse shell from there. And to get a reverse shell, let's start a netcat list now on Negative LVNP on port one, two, three, four, eight, eight, eight. This is going to be a very quick listener. And let me use my cheat sheet here. Reverse shells. Let's start this one. We want to see if we can get a shell here. Ooh, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like the E option. Let's try the other one. So if the, if this E doesn't work, this one should work. But let me change the port to be the one that I'm listening on. 8888. This is why you need a cheat sheet so that you can quickly grab these things without any issues All right so i'm just saying hey phone home to my ip address here on port 888 and i'm already listening on port 88 so if this works i get a shell All right that's good i should still be ww data which is which is okay but let's fix this. I don't like this this at all. Let's fix it with Python so we, we can get a normal looking shell.
All right now we can actually get in so i can't believe you can't believe that it's that easy right so let's do an ls here index.php cd such home and let's see who do we have we have user brexit if you have watched my youtube channel you know that i like to do this sudo minus l to see if i have any sudo permissions because that's the easiest way and as you can see we can run without a password we can get a shell as brexit without a password that's what this means here so that means that if i do an ls here i see that i have brexit here which is so there was, uh, there was a site about elections and now we're talking about brexit and interesting enough look at this we have a shell here ls minus la let's see who can run this shell as was well, this is interesting right can we can, is this able to run as root nah it's just brexit that's okay let's switch you this switch user and, and become brexit then with this right here it says we can become brexit without a password so sudo user brexit slash bin bash all right so we are now brexit and according to this, Brexit can do, can read all these files. So let's do that. So now we can say get user to text. Since we have Brexit, we should be able to see that. Okay. I guess this is a flag. So this is a flag number one, which is okay. So let's go ahead. What's up with this? What is that? Okay, so that bash is just, ah, oh, it's launching this WebPy thing that we saw earlier. Remember, I went to GitHub page. So that is interesting. All right, so right here, you need to, uh, you need to have your own methodology. I, I bring in um, a new for, linear num and then we can just run linear num automated scripts and see what we can write to and what we can't write to and all, all that stuff to make sure that uh, things can work and to do that new tab really i thought i had linear num somewhere in here I might not let's see okay let's look at it can I do that okay ah uh, you know what let's not run automated scripts for this one Let's manually do things. Can I clear my screen? No, I can't. All right. Ls minus la in here. I wonder if we can get somewhere with this. But here's a quick one. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Should I bring lin and num and run it in here from the temp folder and see if we find something? I don't want it to take too long. Oh, let's see. So it's C. Let's minus LA. What you want to be doing here is follow a guide for privilege enumeration, and I'm not doing that right now. And things like log rotate, sometimes you find that you might have root permissions to do that um right now i'm trying to see let me automate this process so that we can be it can be quick can we do stuff that we shouldn't on this system that's what we're trying to find out here maybe let's see 
me open my cheat sheet here so we can see my priv -esk. I'm thinking we should be able to just find files that we can write to if, if possible. Okay, so there it is. Uh, not that. I have a shortcut to a, to a to an article that we can use for privilege escalation. Let me show you. It's called a guide to privilege, Linux privilege escalation, and uh, I've been using it for a while. So if you haven't done Linux privilege escalation, this will be a good one to, to read on. It's um, by this person. There's got milk and a bunch of things, but hey, I'm going to use what uh, this person sent me here. Oh, you, you want to find the IF? Oh, that is going to find files that I can write to. Okay. Let's do this. Command F files can be Okay. SUIDs, that's what you are talking about on the comments here. Let's check those. And while it's running, let's also find some files that we can write. So this is what I did with pseudo minus L. Which, which is the, the easiest one then to fix it. And then uh, let's see. And we can also do this one. And I think that's uh, PEM minus 400. Okay, I see what, it, what you're doing there. All right, let's go and find out which ones we can write. I already know which ones. Okay, this is still running. Uh, this gives me a clue. ls minus la here let's see if we have uh permissions to the password file since we're already here before we do anything else look at that okay brexit can write to the password file that's the easiest one so far so if brexit can write to the password file here's what we need to do so this is too easy. I can't clear. All right. So this is too easy. Maybe not as challenging as you, some of you might like. Since Brexit can write to the password file, let's go to my notes. Did I put it under? I have this add user to the Etsy file. I used this one on hack the box once but we should be able to use it the same. This is going to create a password. One, two, three, four. Then I can echo that password here, which is the same password. So I use this one on the hack the box and I use it every time I need to do something silly as this one. So this is kind of silly and I'm not happy that it's that silly, but hey, just verifying that the password that I'm getting here is identical to what I have. Cheat, cheat. All right. So it is. In that case, oh, no, no, no. All right. Let's see. Password one, two, three, four. All right, so this was just too easy, guys. That's a quick machine that we can do to actually uh, demonstrate sort of like um, CTF ethical hacking on a uh, Vaughn Hub. As you can see here, you can get it through them pretty quickly. And this is supposed to be similar to OSCP machines. I don't think they are this easy, but as you, as you saw here, 
uh, we were able to just uh, find things very quickly. Uh, in this case, we just needed to check things manually. I didn't even need to bring any big guns here, like tools or anything like that. But we were able to exploit this machine. So if you like this type of content, please uh, go to our um, YouTube channel, uh, IT Security Labs. I have more than 30 videos going through hack the box machines. That's where I learned most of these things. And also that's how I was able to create my own sort of cheat sheet guide here that I use for different things when I'm uh, exploiting machines. But since we got through this too quickly, let's look at Security Onion. How much noise did we generate during this attack? Because that's more interesting. What did we do? So I'm just refreshing here. Because I think for those who like defending, this is now more interesting. All right, first of all, we did an Nmap scan. Look at this. We got caught by Suikara as the Nmap scripting engine. If we go to Graf uh, no, not Grafana, Kibana, we should be able to see all these Suikara events as well. So, big takeaway, if you're going to run Nmap in a production environment, you're going to be caught by a poor default installation of Security Onion. So maybe you want to hide more, do scene scans using other tools other than Nmap, because Nmap can be detected very easily. Then, um, let's see. This is probably from us running Derb for these 403s. Because we're brute forcing directories, that's probably what uh, generated this. Let's take a look at them. All right, so here is Kibana. Uh, let's let's um, let's filter these alerts very quickly here by saying we want the alerts to show IPA. Let's use the source IP address as our. Kali Linux. So when you see all the tra traffic that came from Kali Linux. So event data set alert and source IP is goes our Kali Linux, which is 133. Let's see how much noise did Kali Linux generate right now. And this is the Kibana querying language. We're just searching. Okay. As you can see, look at this graph right here. This is just a short period of time that we were running these attacks. We generated this much traffic. This is uh, Kali Linux here. And like we saw in our Security Onion interface, Nmap scripting engine was caught in 53 times. Uh, actually, there's even more from that. Uh, let's see which one will be interesting. Web application attack. So this one is probably... Uh, Derb brute forcing attacks. So let's t take a look at that. We're just doing an autopsy. We committed a crime. Now we are investigating ourselves pretty much. So let's see. <laughs> All right. So first you notice that we were coming from 192.168.30.133, Kali Linux, to 192.168.30.15, which is our victim machine on port 8080. And all these here, they have to be derb. All right. So this is what it looks like. And let's look at the rule that fired. Make sure that we know. Uh, so extend or any message. Okay. Yeah, this rule is just detecting that we were doing a scan here and every single one of these is from us brute forcing. So as you can see here, with our, within our lab, we can learn a lot of things like how to detect simple attacks like what we just did and also how to actually do the actual attack itself, which is in this case, just by adding our machine called misdirection to the lab here. Um, this traffic was not leaving the lab so if we go to our firewall we shouldn't see anything of value this traffic was not leaving the firewall so my next gen firewall here is not going to show me anything really it's showing me 
all the links that I was visiting to the internet that were blocked, but really nothing of interest to the attack that we did. So that's something that's of interest. And also, if you guys like this type of content, um, please go to our YouTube channel, IT Security Labs, and we can hang out there more. I just wanted to show you on this Facebook page quickly what we can do in this lab. And if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Muzamil, thank you very much for uh, stepping up and showing me what you, what you can do. Otherwise, have a wonderful night. Thank you.